we finally made it to um, Brisbane. Obviously, it's been a very um, bit of period, obviously, due, due to COVID traveling. We meant to come here for a while, so finally made it. So, obviously, you've run me through the store and stuff. So, tell me a little bit more about your journey for, for the viewers that want to, want I suppose, get to know more about yourself, just as a person, your family, your business. Come from BBL, playing steak wicket, and these kind of things. So. No worries, first of all, firstly, it's nice to finally get you up here, um, give you a tour of the office and, and the space that we're working from uh, day in, day out. Um, so my journey, I guess, going back, um, starts from when I was at the back end of my cricket career days, I guess, down in Tasmania. Um, I knew the brand, um, the Icon brand very well, obviously being a cricket brand um, where, where it started and then delving in a little bit more and understanding what the brand does, um, you know, being involved in the customised apparel and team wear industry. But um, I guess having a slight um, cross paths with you a few times over, over my cricketing journey time and, and knowing the, the current CEO, Dan Salpietro, very well. Um, yeah, we just had a few conversations and what life after cricket would potentially look like for me um, what I wanted to do after cricket uh, and a big part of that was um, was I guess going more into that business ownership type of role and, and running a business and having the autonomy to do that um, and it all just kind of worked out didn't it um, yeah it all fit into place and, and it was a good fit for both of us um, always going to move back to Brisbane um, post cricket and uh, and yeah Icon were, were at the stage where they, they needed to try and push the brand up here so it just worked out for everyone I think. Um, yeah. So that was I guess how I found my way into the business and then there was a pretty steep learning curve of everything that happens in the industry. Um, I guess I've had a fair bit of training and, and business background prior to my time in cricket but um, yeah it was, a, it was a, certainly a, a steep learning curve on, on how to run your own business, um, how to manage it, learning all the, the ins and outs of the industry but no it's been an enjoyable, I don't know how long we've been operating for now, 18 months probably coming up mm -hmm. to two years now um, so it's been a really really enjoyable journey so far, um, I've absolutely thrown myself into it trying to create um, and grow this business as quick as possible, um, turn it into something that I can be proud of to, to have my own business running up here and, and something that continues to grow the Icon brand um, up in this area. You've definitely made a mark around here. So uh, talk me through your mindset um, early days. Mm. I suppose thinking, you were mentioned thinking about life after cricket. Mm. At what age were you? Did you start thinking? Mm. At what stage of your career did you start thinking, okay, what, how long am I going to go for? Whatever it is. So, so talk me, obviously, this is probably something that we haven't spoken about when you first thought of the idea of what's life after cricket and how long was it from then till when you started considering mm. Icon? Yeah, so I, I had, uh, I was one of the few cricketers who doesn't go straight into cricket, I guess. I missed out on a rookie contract and, and whatnot at that 18, 19 year old stage and, and um, threw myself into work rather than cricket. Um, so yeah, I was working with KPMG, so I was a qualified chartered accountant, um, worked for a mining construction company. Um, so I guess I knew what it took to be involved in that space, never from a business management side of view. It was always you know, in the back of the business doing, doing the work in behind. So um, for me, when, yeah, during my cricket days, it was always going to be, I'll delve back into, when I finish, I'll delve back into the world of business in some respect, whether that was into accounting or a management accountant style role. Um, but I had more of a passion for the day-to-day -day operational side of business rather than looking and crunching at numbers. Um, not to say that that's not involved in it, there is a, a lot of it, but um, yeah, it probably, it, I think there's a, the lifestyle side of it as well. Um, being able to run your own business um, with family and things like that gives you the opportunity to, to kind of pick and choose when you do things. Um, certainly more, more work goes into it, more stress goes into it, but um, yeah, I think there's a lot more upside to it as well if, if you yeah. can make it successful and, and I always had the passion and drive to want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I said, it was, it was talking to people like Dan um, at the time and, and kind of that conversation grew pretty quickly at the back end of that last year that I had down in Tasmania um, where I wasn't sure I knew I was off contract and, and I was kind of leaning towards it. Um, that may be the way that it goes. Um, so we started to explore it more and more and yeah, the conversation grew pretty quickly. Had John Melwell's moved already to Strikers? 
Oh, that's the uh, did you have a couple of years, uh, John? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, how, yeah, how much impact did that have? Because John's still playing BBL and he's got yeah. two stores. Now, well, yeah. it's just a three, th- th- I think three stores yeah. now. He's involved, obviously, in mm. a few different And not just, not just John either. There's, I'm, yeah. I did know that there was a, there's a fair history of um, cricket players being involved in the brand. Um, but yeah, look, I spoke to Wellesy. I, mm. I kind of played a little bit of cricket with him and, and still ring him and ask him queries and we took, chat about the business here mm. and there at the moment. So um, he's always a good person to lean on. He's, um, he spent a lot of time involved with Icon, yeah. um, so he, he, he knows a lot about it. So yeah, no, certainly um, lent on people like that to get their experiences and, and knowledge of the business and the brand and where it can go, um, amongst others as well. Yeah, and touching about the family, um, just found out, probably about 20 minutes ago, <laughs> the second one coming, second little monster yeah. coming, so yeah. congratulations, hopefully everything everything goes well. Yeah, um, life's, yeah life's about to get busier. Um, um, Talk, talk to me about just juggling work, work and work and work again. But obviously, they're both they're both um, obviously very enjoyable. But mm. yeah, yeah. So well, yeah. I have going to the work one. I've thrown myself into it. But I'll answer that. I don't think you can you can try and take it on without throwing yourself into it. You've got to fully commit to, to doing it and giving it everything you've got. And I've certainly done that. But um, I guess away from work, um, yeah, family's a big a big part of, um, of, of life, obviously. And, and my wife, Kim, um, we've got a little fella, Jack, who's coming up to his second birthday um, shortly. And we have, um, yeah, number two on the way, another little boy whose yeah. due date's in a couple of weeks. So whenever that happens, yeah. it could happen today, mate. We could get a phone call. And a and we rushed off. Um, so yeah, we'll have two little boys running around soon. But um, yeah, that'll complicate things and, yeah. and work and time and all that. I'm well aware of that. But um, yeah, no, yeah. it's a, it's a big part. I love getting home and, and getting your cuddles from your from your little fella. And yeah, um, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a pretty important part of life and, and balance of. Um, Yep, get yourself away from work here and there, clock off and, and spend yeah. some time at home. As far, as far as leaving a bit of legacy behind a little, a little bit as well, I'm not sure if you have thought about that as well, now having and hopefully two boys, obviously, when everything goes to everything goes well and stuff, is I suppose you're working hard and how much drive is there now to go, you know what, like, I want to make something of this, hopefully, and then one day these boys can, I suppose, have a look at it and see what dad has achieved. Mm. And, um, does that give you a bit of push as well to sort of leave something behind? Have you thought about that? Oh, in a sense that I think everything we do is, or everything we do is to, to try and set ourselves up, mm-hmm. and is is to get our family into a into a nice um, position that we can give our give our kids something in the future. Absolutely, yeah. um, you know they'll pick their own paths in what they want to do in life. Absolutely, yeah. and there's so much time to you know to figure that out for themselves. But. Um, yeah, I wouldn't lie if, if I was saying that, you know, we weren't trying to do everything we could to give them a you know, nice, easy easy life. And um, yeah, if we can be successful in what we do, then that'll make their, their journey a little bit easier as well. I suppose, hopefully they do play cricket, that they'll be number one start. Um, yeah, cricket or golf or, or <laughs> yeah, cricket golf. soccer, who knows. Depends what sport makes the most money. Yeah. Never know. Um, obviously, a lot of stuff is changing. Um, your, I suppose, um, how many days uh, you're doing that? Obviously, I don't know how many days you're doing, but as far as yourself, I'm just trying to think of the journey that it was, I suppose, when you did start. And when I think it was Dan that told me that you were interested mm. at the start. Um, and obviously, I didn't know yourself. Now, mm. I suppose you look at people playing cricket on TV, you just don't know how many mm. brains there is. And mm. You guys are supposed to playing sport all the time, you don't know how, I suppose, uh, how smart they are with business and yeah. how deep they think about the stuff and some people just play cricket, they just like, you know, just hit balls basically, yeah. I suppose, but yeah. um, I was shockingly surprised and surprised about, I suppose, how switched on you were, not that you didn't look smart or anything, <laughs> just, just how, how, the, how, how, how much detail you required, how much work yeah. you did require, I think those hard work early days have sort of set you up in a way that um, you did ask a lot of questions mm. and not only did you ask questions, you want to implement change without going to the top of the start because mm. there's some systems that you've made a massive change for our company and stuff so mm. um, yeah talk me through I suppose your upbringing a little bit about um, when you did become so I suppose yeah yeah I guess as a, as a person I'm fairly uh, meticulous in detail I don't like leaving things unfinished or anything like that so um, 
my working background, I think, has been a big part of that. So I obviously started with KPMG, so I was in audit. So my background was in audit. So analysing businesses and what they do and their practices and their, their procedures and making sure everything actually aligns with trying to have a successful result. Um, so I'd spent a lot of time analysing, as I said, looking into businesses and, and lots of different types and sizes um, and making sure that, that you know there's no risk involved in them to, to get to where they want to go and, and trying to minimise that risk. I guess um, and I think that background of hard work early in my days um, has probably been a big factor in the way that I approach my work these days um, yeah I think those or the big four accounting firms you, you certainly get pushed pretty hard when you start as well and, uh, and being thrown into that environment you probably my expectation of what it takes to work is different to a lot of other cricket players who come in and you know, they hit cricket balls all day, every day, and they, they don't get the reality check, yeah. I guess, of what it takes to to work not nine to five, but from nine till midnight or three a.m. to get a job done for the next day, and then rock up the next day. Like there was a lot of that at that, those young years, and and I think that um, trains you into it. I guess forms your set of expectations of of what you yeah. need to do to to be successful. Um, now, as I said, I was always going to, to find my way and I, back into the working world after cricket and it's actually a bit of a struggle for a lot of sports people. Um, as I said, I think that often begins or, or is created by the fact that they go straight into cricket before finishing any study or actually working full time. That's just the way sport works, that when people are introduced into professional sport. Um, so I consider myself really lucky that I was able to not go straight into cricket, um, actually live life and, and I think I debuted when I was almost 26, 20, yeah, almost 26. It was my first game for Queensland, so I was one of the, the very late ones. So I'd had all those years, um, I guess, living living a normal life that, yeah. that everyone else lives, um, working working your backside off rather than going straight into it. And I think it's yeah, it's put me in a really um, really good position for for when I was always going to finish my career. career. And I think it took away a lot of stress too that that a number of sports people feel when they're coming towards the back end of their, their sporting careers of what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, what they're going to find themselves into. So I never really had that worry. I, I knew I'd always be okay and come out the other side of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, pretty happy that the opportunity arose when it did. Right. I, I've got a lot of respect for yourself, not just saying because um, you're here and stuff. Is the, and the main main reason is not just the cricket ability, the fact that obviously uh, you came into business at a time that was really tough in a way of COVID had just hit, I think, right in the, right in the yep. midst of it. Yep, yeah, it was. Now, uh, that would scare a lot of people away. And not only scare a lot of people away, there's a lot of people that take a lot of risks, but especially a guy like yourself who, who audits the business and numbers and everything else would scare you. You know what? You could have waited. A year, year and a half, but then um, the time might have passed that you might have mm. met someone else. So, so I suppose um, just talk, uh, talk me through. Obviously, we can talk about investing money and all that. We don't have to get the numbers to mm. actually parting with money. Not only is opening up one store, now you've got I've got two businesses and actually mm. got three now. Mm. So you go from one to two to three in a mm. very very quick time. Mm. Um, but, and 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 I say to everyone else, all our franchise and all that else is like it takes balls, it takes mm. a lot of energy and. And especially when you got, I suppose, hopefully two two young kids soon. So yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Well, when we, yeah. I, like, as me, probably me as a person, I analyse things, mm. um, analyse everything. So yeah, when that decision was up, we, we I look right into into everything to to weigh up um, what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. Um, so yeah, it started off with with Icon, I guess, centralised around Brisbane, and, and we expanded and and tried to increase our um, uh, footprint, I guess, down on the Gold Coast. And we've we've invested quite a bit of time and energy and, mm. and money into growing our space down there, and we'll continue to do that because it's it's a big market in its own in itself. Um, and then Adelaide as well, um, just being, I guess, that opportunity opened up, as you know, and. Um, and working with other good people in, that are already invested in the brand and, and know the brand really well to try and grow Icon down in that part of part of Australia as well, um, which we're really keen to do. Um, a different market to Queensland, and, and it's surprising how different the market is. Yeah. Um, it differs by by region, um, but yeah, looking yeah, in Adelaide to, to push the brand as hard as possible as well. Yeah. As far as the quality, um, what, what was your first initial? So, for the first time you came across Icon, give mm. me your first impression. So let's talk, and, and then I want you to go um, talk about as you're about to enter it, mm. um, when you start considering it to what it is now. So, give me your first initial thought. First time you saw Icon, whether it was on TV or playing with someone or like yeah. that or anything. 
Yeah, so oh, obviously I knew Icon as the cricket brand. I guess being a cricket player, we, we, you know, we know that Icon is a cricket brand. Um, uh, but Icon has a fairly large footprint down in Tasmania as well from an apparel, from a teamwear point of view. So I'd seen and had access to a lot of Icon apparel down there. Um, my club team down there wore it. So um, yeah, I was wearing it um, and knew the brand and knew the people down there quite well. So. Um, yeah, my, my first, I guess, thoughts and, and was was basically using the gear, and I knew that it was a quality product. I knew that there was good gear that we were that we were wearing. Um, so I wasn't jumping into this thinking, oh, I'm going to jump into a brand that I don't like. It was a brand that I automatically had some kind of drawing to. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess in an industry that I was keen to continue to stay involved in, in that sports and, and, and active kind of space. Um, and then, yeah, when you, you, you throw yourself into it, mate, as you know, there's there's a whole lot more to it. Um, <laughs> if we're talking apparel and team wear, there's, it's, it's an industry in itself. So um, yeah, there was a lot to learn. Um, in a short period of time. And, more than and, you thought? Yeah, more than I thought, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but in a good way, and, and, it's, and it's kind of like riding a bike once you know it, you know it, um, you know, and, and it makes it easy to speak to clients and, and work with them and make sure that they're happy. Um, but you need to need to be you know, up to speed yourself on what's happening. So I did have that initial time, and everyone who's new into this industry, every employee that we have walking the door needs to spend that time, you know, learning about how the industry works and all the things that go into apparel and, and team where, um, uh, you know, I know that side of it really, really well now after spending almost a couple of years involved. Um, and the brand itself is, for me, has just continued to grow and grow. We're, we, you know, pushing things like the cap you're wearing on, on golf and different spaces and, and pushing the boundaries where we can, um, trying to, to continue to, to provide the best products. Um, and for me, the most important thing for my business is providing the best service. So we, I'm particularly you know, on Queensland, it's a massive focus on making sure our clients are happy and well looked after. And I think if we can push that message out there, then it, you know, Icon as a brand will continue to be perceived really really well um, your clients are happy um, from from what we're giving them but also the quality of the gear mate and um, and yeah we're, also, we're always trying to improve we're always trying to get better we don't want to compete necessarily with you know the cheapest entry-level stuff we want to be giving yeah. people stuff that they're really happy and proud to be wearing yeah. and the Speaking of caps, um, that's a product that there's no credit head offers. You've mm -hmm. created yourself, so you've gone and have a look at it. You've you've you've, you've thrown the, uh, the streetwear logo that we designed a while ago, and mm -hmm. I think it looks fantastic. So mm -hmm. talk me through that process, and mm -hmm. I suppose when you started sort of thinking about doing and stuff. So and, and and as a head office, we always give the um, people that own the businesses um, a lean way to be able to think mm -hmm. outside the square. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not a McDonald's where it says that your burgers are put a certain way, the lettuce mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. And here you go, want people to think for themselves. So, um, yeah, um, just talk me through that process. Yeah, so, I mean, typically most of the gear we do is, is made to order. It's customised, but we certainly try and have a little bit of um, fun where we can. And the streetwear logo, um, as you kind of insinuated, um, I think looks really cool on, on caps. So we played around with a few. I'm wearing one, um, a few different colours. But just, you know, things that we can wear out and on the street, be comfortable, um, so look cool, social cap. So um, we do it and we use that logo on caps quite a bit. Um, yeah. I think it just gives it a cool little look um, on, a, on our headwear. Yeah. And you still get out much to soak it or are you, who are you rocking that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I wear the caps every day. If, if the question is, do I get out on the circuit? Not, not so much anymore. Um, yeah, no, getting yeah. that age. Where, when was the last time you were at? At the pub? Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, with the new one on the way, we've been pretty careful. The as well? <laughs> we've been, we've, I've been uh, locked up for a little while, trying not to get COVID with the little one on, in, on his yeah, way. So, yeah. Um, yeah, not for a little while. Um, looking forward to having a beer once um, little one's here and yeah. safe and yeah. Yeah, everyone, everyone's healthy. Hopefully, um, going back out and catching up with a few more people. But yeah, we've been we've been living the last few months just fairly yeah. fairly safely, I guess you could say, with Kim being pregnant. So, very tough time. This is as, as much as you want to. I suppose not think about not think about when especially when your kids are involved and becomes mm. in a way of very paranoid world and stuff and, and you have mm. every right I suppose to, to feel and think that way. Mm. Um, how long have you been with Kim for? Don't put me on the spot, Faz. Oh, um, what date was it? Yeah, <laughs> Mary 2019. Actually, I'll stop you there. Today's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Going home at lunchtime, we'll discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how long has it been? 
Uh, married April 2019. Um, so, like coming up with three years. Yeah. Um, together before that, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. Five years. And how's it so, Five, four in Taz. Five years. Five years. And Plus three. You, eight you guys, years. Did you guys know each other? Younger age or? Uh, no, 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 no. We were introduced through mutual friends up here yeah. um, in Queensland before we went down to Taz. Yeah. And we were together for about a year before before yeah. then and Kim yeah. went down with me. Yeah. Down to Hobart. But um, no, no, it was just, yeah, mutual friends. We, we yeah. didn't know each other and, and caught up and met and, yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, things things went well, obviously, yeah. and things obviously do uh, work on well. Apart from the Valentine's Day spending here and stuff, but <laughs> apart from that, you do obviously speak very highly of her. I haven't been there yet. Um, but obviously, we have we do build a new appreciation of someone once they've had a yeah. kid as well. We sort of as this guys, as we just think yeah. that we do all the hard work, but all the time, and it's the last put thing we every day. Is look after <laughs> a kid and make them grow. So credit where credit is due and stuff is. Women, females do an amazing job, I suppose, Absolutely. Um, raising kids and stuff. As if you said, sit at home and look after a kid for, no, I suppose, nurture a kid for nine months at work. Yeah. My job is easy coming to work and exactly. spending all day in here. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, but a lot of guys are in denial about that. They say, oh, I've got to earn the money. That's hard and stuff. But I mean, we, we, we both know which one we'd rather, yeah. we'd rather be doing. So, um, no, that, that, that's good, I suppose. It's, it's really good for the viewers, I suppose, to get to know yourself. And a lot of people just seeing you on TV and playing cricket, breaking balls and getting wickets and stuff. And um, it's really good to get inside of yourself as a person. Um, um, yeah, thank you for your time. No, cheers, Fast. Thank you. Thank you.